So on this channel, I've talked before about the iOS applications I had made back in college, but I don't think I've ever talked about the ad revenue that I somewhat generated from one of the apps. And I say somewhat is because it's basically not not at all. I didn't I didn't really make any money from the mobile from the app. Um, but I don't want to I want to show you that I want to show to uh, you my Google AdMob um, dashboard of that app, and I want to show you the performance of it. And I also, I'm just trying to be transparent about it, really. That's kind of the goal of this. Um, I, I just am trying to be transparent about software development as a whole, uh, what you can reasonably expect to see uh, or make as a software developer. So that's really what I'm trying to accomplish on the channel right now. And before I do that, uh, I want to show you a book that I got, and I'm probably going to start reading it pretty soon. Um, so it's unscripted by MJ DeMarco, so I'm going to start reading this guy and maybe I'll make a video somewhere along the way about it. I don't know, but let me go ahead and pull up my um, ad mob revenue from the app. So if you don't know already, Google ad mob um, is a mobile advertising kind of platform that you can use to insert ads into a mobile app. So it's, it's through Google and it's pretty easy to set up um pretty much all you have to do is go ahead and come in here and you make a new app and then it gives you like a key that you plug into your application so it kind of gives you a framework or a little template that you use in your code and part of that is a add key that you're going to get generated through here uh again it's super easy to do i had no idea what i was doing when i set this up and somehow i figured it out and, and set it up so, and, and again, I didn't know what I was doing, but I got it to work. So I'm sure that you can get it to work. Um, but so this is from a few years ago. And if you go to uh, your network um, performance and you go to view report, it'll take you to your entire report. Um, and then I'm gonna take the range off of last seven days. We'll go ahead and do all time and apply it. And as you can see, I made a whole 20 cents off my app, uh, which, you know, I made money from it. So I guess technically by definition, I'm a professional iOS developer. <laughs> uh, but so this is really what I want to get at, at really at this video. Uh, you can see that, so this is, actually, does it give me a year? I have no idea. I don't remember what, I don't remember what year this was. So, okay, 2018. I guess is when this was live. Yeah, 2018 is when it was live. And I pretty much made 20 cents off the app. Uh, so so how that works is basically when somebody, I had an ad banner on the bottom of the app. That's how I'll, let me pull up the app on my phone and I'll show you where it would have been. I have since disabled it, um, the, the advertisement. So I, I made this app and basically if you can see that, put the ad banner on the bottom of the app um, which if you want to if you want a video of what the application is let me know in the comments and I can do a dedicated video just walking through what my first iOS app looked like that I got in the store um, but so it was just a mobile um, ad banner on the bottom of the app so if you clicked it it's that counts as a right that counts towards your earnings essentially that's how it works um, so in total, I made 20 cents and really where I want to go with that is, you know, just it, it's necessary to set expectations. So <clears throat> when I was, when, when the iOS store came to be, you know, back in, I think 2008, I want to say, uh, it was really new and people, when they made apps, they were just making a killing on it. They were doing really well. Um, because it wasn't saturated a lot and it was relatively easy at that point in time to get an app in the store and have it noticed by people just simply because there wasn't a lot of apps so there wasn't a lot of redundancy in terms of what apps were out there that could accomplish a certain task I mean you, we probably have you know at least a million apps that are flashlight apps now I probably <laughs> you know so we but back when the app store started there wasn't a lot of apps that did a specific function so if you made an app that was new uh let's say like you know i soda or like tap tap or flashlight something really basic in nature like that 
they did really well because it was new and there wasn't a lot of apps like that. So if we go ahead and look at, there's a Wikipedia article, right? So you can see it started in 2008 with 500 starting apps at launch. Uh, and then July, there was 800. And at the end of 2018, there was roughly 15,000 apps. Now, keep in mind, 15,000 for the entire store. That's a really low number. So it, it would be really easy back if you were in 2009 to push an app up, launch, you know, launch an app, put ads on it. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that it would have been noticed because there's not a lot of apps. Um, but the problem is nowadays in 2021, uh, there, yeah, there's well over 2 million apps. And the problem with that is that how they have the app store now, uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to get your app noticed in the app store. You can make the greatest app, but if you don't, if you don't, if, if you don't stand out in this 2 billion number or 2 million number, it's not going to get downloaded. It's not going to get noticed. You have to drive traffic to your app in order to get, um, to get revenue you can have as many ads as you want and it can be the greatest game the most well built well built game but if it doesn't if, if it doesn't match if it doesn't get found in the two million you're not going to get any money off it and we see here even in you know some of the earlier days like 2011 2012 it was still under a million it was things were still kind of fresh in the market like it was a, it was a big demand to be an ios developer and make these really niche apps that people used you know, back four, like five or six years ago, but now where it is now, it's the market is so saturated with uh, with apps, and you're just not gonna make money unless you have an audience, unless you have traffic to drive to that app. So for me, um, I, I spent. I'm trying to look at the numbers here. My talks are. I don't think there's anything more um, useful. You can look at this if you want. Just a Wikipedia article about the app store in general but so going back here right i made 20 cents um and this app took me probably you know i want to say maybe five five months to make and again i had no idea what i was doing at all this was all new to me i i didn't know how to do swift i didn't know how xcode worked i didn't know any of that i didn't know the process to get an app published in the apple app store i, I was clueless so i made this probably I'm guessing five or six months. I don't. I don't remember. I'm just guessing. Uh, so I spent five or six months when I was in college doing that. You know, really just for fun, uh, with no real intention of making any money off it. I just wanted to see, really, if I could put ads in my mobile app and get it to work. Essentially, was my goal. Um, one, because I needed a personal project at the time that people could go out and see. Uh, and two, I was just genuinely interested in iOS development. I was trying to look for, at the time, a job in iOS development. Um, but so you have to set your expectations, you know, reasonable. You can't, you can't pursue, um, you can't say that you're going to want to be an indie app developer um, and rely on mobile ad revenue because it's very, it's not, it may not be as reliable as you think. The market is very saturated and you should always, if you want to go into mobile app development as an indie developer, meaning just as yourself, and you have intentions of making a living off that, um, you should probably have plan, you know, B, A, A, B, C, D, and a lot of other backup plans. Um, and you should probably have a job while you're doing that because you might be surprised at how hard it really is to drive traffic. Uh, if you already have a large audience of people who listen to you, if you already have a lot of people who you know are going to need the app because it's maybe some niche utility app or something like that, um, then you might be fine. But if you're just an average person like like me, I, I didn't have an audience to market it to. I didn't have I didn't have that. I was just sending my app into the whole two million you know, app market. Uh, just to see how it did and obviously no one's gonna it no one's ever gonna find that it's it's near impossible to find unless you type exactly the name of what the app was um but then again it's it's you're not gonna you, um, you know the only way you're gonna make a living is if you make if you get tens and tens of thousands of clicks on that ad um 
And again, you need traffic. You need to drive traffic to that. And so I, I just am trying to set, I guess, reasonable expectations because I see a lot of these ads um, for mobile app development and these code boot camps and things like that um, that kind of advertise how easy it is to make a game and how easy it is to make mobile apps and send those and you're just going to make all this money. The reality of it is you're just, you're not, it's, it doesn't work like that. It's not that simple. You have to, you have to do the marketing before you even begin to do programming. Uh, the only way you can begin to make that successful is if you work, document your process of programming it, um, which may take a lot longer just because it'll take a lot longer to make the videos. Uh, it, it'll take at least a year if you go that route. Uh, but to say that you're just going to make a game and, and publish it and make a living off that, I really doubt that. And I really feel like a lot of these companies are very misleading in terms of when they, how easy they say it is to make a game. You know, sure, you can make a game and that's great, but I hope it's just for a hobby because it's the expectation that you're going to make a living off selling that game. Well, it may, it may happen. It may happen to some people and that's awesome. But for the average person, you know, it, I, I wouldn't rely on that. Um, I would definitely, if you're seriously wanting to make a living off of some mobile app you made or, or a game you made, anything, you, you really need to dedicate time into figuring out how you need to grow your audience. Um, and I feel like that's, that is, that's the difficult part. That is extremely hard to do. Um, you can learn to program, you can learn to make the app, um, but it's, that doesn't make money. You, the, what makes money is how you market your app and how you get people to use it. And that's really, that's really part of the issue I have with programming in some of these boot camps and some of these game dev programs, you know, that I've seen advertised on YouTube and stuff like that. They, they say, you know, they basically say, you know, how um, they basically tell you that you can make an app or a game and it's easy and you just need to learn this language and you'll be set. Well, it's like, okay, but can I pay my bills and program hockey? I doubt it. Like you need to figure out how you're going to market it. And that's the hard skill. And you have to figure out how you're going to add value through the app. Because let's, let's be honest, if you, if you make an app that, you know, is a game and it's, it's great. Like, let's say you make, I don't know, some racing game. There's a lot of racing games out there, so you have to figure out, one, how you're gonna differentiate your app, and two, why do you want people to download this? Um, and another key part to this is, once you publish the app up there, uh, you have to maintain it, right? You have to push updates to it. I know for me, um, at least in the, in the iOS store, you have to publish, I believe, an update at least once a year. Um, and obviously, if you want to drive traffic and make a living, you need to be pu uh, pushing regular updates. And that's a lot of time, too. And you also have to consider the fact that you need a website to accompany your app because you need a privacy policy associated with the app. Um, you have to set that up. So you need to maintain uh, an app. You need to maintain somewhere that you host the privacy policy, which is probably going to be a website. Uh, so those are two things you have to maintain right there, which is a lot of time. Uh, and you have to figure out how you're going to push the updates. You're going to have to figure out what you want to add. You're going to have to figure out documentation for the updates. There's a lot of things you have to figure out, and it's not just a one and done thing. It's going to be continuous, right? You're going to have to maintain that. And I, I realize maintenance is not a big deal if you program it well to begin with. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, you just encounter random bugs that you'll find along the way that you'll have to fix and you have to maintain. So, and, and it's a lot to think about because <clears throat> if you don't have the traffic at first, if you don't have the market at first and you push the app, um, you have to maintain the app even though you know it's not being downloaded. And that can be a hard hurdle to get over at first because you have to say to yourself, well, if I put in the work now, even though it's not being downloaded, um, you know, later on, maybe it'll drive traffic. But you have to, you know, it's, it's all about how you use your time and, and what can you be doing to drive to get to get revenue, right? So you have to say to yourself, is it worth the time to maintain this app and to build it? Uh, will it pay off? 
And I fear that unless you have an audience, it's not going to pay off. It's, it's not going to be worth your time if you plan to make a living off it. Um, now, now, again, for some people it, it, it might, and some people just get lucky and hit the, you know, the feature to the out or the algorithm, but that's one in a million chance. It, it's just very uncommon and very unlikely. Um, that being said, you know, it, you just have to, you have to figure it out. And so for me, I, I'm just trying to be transparent about the whole process, what it looks like. Uh, if you have any experience doing this, if you have any experience uh, with what your mobile app has done, and if you've done this successfully, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about different people's experiences, maybe on the AdMob platform and the iOS development space. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and uh, experiences. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I have a lot more video ideas coming up in the future. I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can about everything related to software development, just to help you guys out and to help you set expectations in a realistic way. Um, so that's kind of how I'm trying to add value. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.